A bipartisan group of U.S. lawmakers say they've agreed on a proposal to give the government greater visibility into billions of dollars of investment into China and sweeping new powers to block them. President Biden seems to be backing the concept, which comes at a time when China's economy is trying to rebound from COVID lockdowns and supply chain strains. Shanghai is back, reopened after a complete shutdown to stop the spread of COVID-19. But as people go back to work, the fear of further lockdowns remains. The mood is somber, but you wouldn't know going by recent data. So far this year, foreign investment in China stands at over $80 billion. That's 17% more than last year. It's unclear, though, whether this trend will hold. The U.S. is keeping up trade barriers put in during the Trump administration. Chips, batteries, AI and fintech are supposed to be sold to China only in exceptional cases. The Chinese government has criticized these measures as inappropriate. They would only hurt the U.S. and not slow down growth in the Chinese economy. The tone has become more aggressive and there are signs of further decoupling between China and the West. For more, let's cross over to Taipei and DW correspondent So Tsang Han. So it looks like these Chinese investment curbs are gaining momentum in the United States. How big of a problem would that be to China? If the bill passes in the end, it will be a big blow to not only China's economy, but its national strategic plan, Made in China 2025, which aimed to upgrade the manufacturing capability of Chinese industries into a more technology-intensive powerhouse. According to the bill, the U.S. government has a right to stop investment projects in China that are inconsistent with U.S. national security, involving high-tech fields such as semiconductors, real earth, biotechnology, artificial intelligence, and robotics. Restricting U.S. investment in China in these areas would mean U.S.-China decoupling in high technology. But it's, it is a double-edged sword. It might be able to curb China's ambition to outcompete the U.S., but it could also harm the long-term interests of U.S. companies in China. And so at the same time, uh, latest economic data showing that Chinese factories have been producing more stuff last month, but consumption remained frail. What are we to make of that? Well, China's economy showed initial signs of recovery in May, but overall growth still remained fragile. The unemployment rate, if we look at it, surprisingly improved a bit, but it is unclear whether the trend is sustainable with millions of students graduating in the summer. The pandemic is now largely under control in China, and the related strict control measures are gradually being lifted. But the zero COVID policy has had a serious impact on economic activities. With the risk of outbreaks and lockdowns looming, um, consumers and uh, entrepreneurs have become quite cautious. Institutions have lowered their growth expectations for China's economy this year, and the economy will likely run below its potential unless the government takes decisive actions to boost growth. DW correspondent Tso Tsang Han in Taipei. So thank you.